Recently, physicist Sabrine Hossenfelder made a video talking about the Holcomb generator, which claims to be an overunity device that is solid state with no moving parts that produces four to five times the amount of output as input. Now, in her video, she pulls directly from the Holcomb's website a video called The Holcomb Generator Does Not Violate the Second Law of Thermodynamics. Despite that, Sabrine didn't actually clip any portion of that video that explains exactly how the device works and how it doesn't violate the second law of thermodynamics. In iron and a few other metals, the electron spins basically make each atom a tiny magnet. In the state of lowest energy, these atomic magnets are aligned with each other. All right, but how do we save the world with that? I believe, though, that I can see hints of how the electron spin interactions in the ferromagnetism can capture ambient fluctuation energy acting as a kind of ratchet mechanism. This energy has always been in ferromagnetic materials like iron and steel, but it has been wasted by employing field reversals that cause chaos in the electron spins so that the energy is lost. By moving magnetic fields in an orderly fashion, perhaps energy can be captured by the electron spin exchange force to be used to overcome the back force in a generator due to Lenz's law. The device in question manipulates the spin at the quantum level. A magnet is just electron spins that are perfectly aligned. If you look at an AC generator, you realize that at the end of the day, all that's happening is a copper coil is spinning through a magnetic field. This is tapping into the zero point energy all around us, all energy is coming from this field. Physics just hasn't figured it out yet, hasn't accepted that it's real, but it is. The device is supposed to be an advanced power generator that converts mechanical into electrical energy. It looks complicated, but the clue for the origin of that extra energy is in this image. You see that if the magnetic field is neutral, he draws the atomic spins as random. So he waits for the steel to demagnetize and that creates a cycle. You magnetize the steel, that releases energy because the atomic magnets align, you wait for it to you demagnetize, which it does because air molecules bump into it, then you magnetize it again, extract energy and repeat. If that worked, it'd be a perpetual motion machine of the second kind. It converts thermal energy, that's from the air, into work. The inventor insists that the device is not a perpetual motion machine, but I'm pretty sure it is. Perpetual motion machines don't exist because they violate basic laws of physics. The first law of thermodynamics does not get violated because there is zero point energy all around us, a sea of energy that can be tapped into. Second law of thermodynamics, which would say that no system can be perfectly efficient. However, if you were to look at a windmill, that does not have any wind blowing on it, you would say that's impossible for that to generate excess energy. But with that outside input, that net input of the wind, you can produce additional energy. This is the same concept that applies to a zero point fluctuation device. The Holcomb Energy System Generator uses standard generator and motor winding technology, so it can be built without any exotic technology. It is made of the same parts as an ordinary electric motor or generator, but it has no moving parts. Ordinary industrial motor control electronics like solid state relays are, are controlled by industrial computers called programmable logic controllers to sequentially energize the center electromagnets in the device to create a rotating magnetic field with no mechanical motion. Electricity is induced in the other stator coils by the sweeping magnetic fields in the device which gain energy at the atomic level from the electron spin ratchet mechanism due to the quantum exchange force interactions. The Holcomb Energy System, or HES, has no moving parts, unlike conventional synchronous electric generators which have rotors that must be turned by an engine or other mechanical energy source. The HES switches electric current to the electromagnet coils in a stationary iron or, or steel coil. This switching action is controlled by a computer, which is the programmable logic controller, or other computer. The rotating magnetic fields are created in the core which are magnetically coupled to a concentric iron cylinder known as the stator. The current is induced in the stationary stator coils as the magnetic field sweeps through them. This is according to the principles of magnetic induction discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831, the same principle used in conventional generators. However, since the HES has no moving parts, there is no back torque, and the Lenz's law is overcome by what Dr. Holcomb calls the energy from the electron spins. Like some of the previously described magnetic energy devices, I believe that the HES employs the phenomena 
that occurs in iron and other ferromagnetic materials, which allows it to capture the microscopic fluctuations that occur at the atomic scale as an energy source using inter in the interactions of electron spins acting as ratchet mechanisms due to the quantum exchange force between the iron atoms. In conventional generators, this captured energy is wasted in the turbulent chaos created by the collapse of the magnetic fields when they are forced to reverse magnetic direction by 180 degrees. The sweeping magnetic fields of the HES avoid the chaos by not collapsing the field, fields and so it is able to make use of the captured energy. It's actually a really brilliant and simple idea. Now at the end of her video, Sabrina does something that I think is very disingenuous. She brings up a lawsuit against Holcomb. What she fails to mention is that he's addressed this on his website. The company BNK Energy from Delaware. They bought the devices for a whopping $5 million, plugged them in and filed a lawsuit in which you can read. On or around March 1st, 2023, plaintiff installed one of the defendant's products at plaintiff's own car dealership and was surprised, along with its affiliated companies, to discover that the product actually increased energy usage. The statement says, for example, we have third party witness verifications from the world's leading testing inspection and certification firms verifying the HES technology efficacy. We also have videos recorded by individuals now alleging that our technology is a scam that shows the opposite. The HES technology is working as advertised. Now, in a separate lawsuit, the members of the same group attempted to evict them of their research and development center. All prior complaints have been dismissed and the court awarded prevailing party attorney fees against the plaintiffs and in our favor, which the plaintiffs have refused to pay. So is this really debunked or is this another situation where a YouTuber claims to have debunked a device without ever looking at it, without understanding the laws of physics and thermodynamics? I'll leave it for you to decide.